All right, we're on the road headed to get the new engine to replace the damage you saw. Bad grandpa and it's a 67, 68,000 mile 2004 Grand Prix supercharged series three. So I got a picture of it from the site here and we'll be picking it up here in a little while. Like you saw the blow up video, I'll link it up above. We should be getting to the, the junkyard up outside of Syracuse, get the engine and put it in the back of this truck, bring it back home and then we'll start. Alright, the L32 is home. I'm gonna pluck it off the truck here and set it down. I'll end up putting it over on the engine stand there and getting it prepared with the parts from the blown up engine. Alright, now that we got the engine here at the house, I'm gonna start stripping off all the harness, all the brackets I don't need, everything on this L32 that is not necessary for building it up to go into the Regal. So, as you can see here, definitely had some maintenance done at some point, even though this is a lower mileage engine. This um, alternator bracket was changed out. It has the aluminum coolant elbows down here, which means it's had some maintenance done since this is an 04 engine, and those came out in 2012, I believe from Dorman. So I'm going to go through and actually get everything ready on this. I might even mock up my old turbo kit on here just to take some photos for the classifieds. But other than that, it's going on that engine stand and I'm going to put it to work. Okay, so we got it mounted on the stand here. Um, basically, you just got to make sure you take that little um, peg out it's a guide pin there's another one on the rear of the bell housing that doesn't get used but that way all of these mounts sit flush I put it on there with the exhaust on usually I'd yank that off that's all on there now and what we'll do next is pull the harness off and start taking off a lot of these extra brackets that are only there to hold the engine cover on, like this one, the lift mount brackets that we'll just use whenever we hook the chain back up, and then we will pull the ignition components off, the spark plug wires, coil pack in the bracket there, um, the motor mount bracket, get everything ready, and set aside um, anything that's just kind of regular factory parts like the EGR. I think I'll leave the EVAP system connected here. I run a vented gas cap on my car, so the EVAP is just running right against the firewall. We'll take all this down. It's going to get a bath. Um, I've just kind of briefly looked it over, looked underneath. Um, I just sprayed it with some purple power spray just to clean off the barcode just to see what that identifier was. You can see these, all these blocks up through 2005 say 3800 series 2 on them and then if you were to go from this block which says 3800 series 2 it's an 04 and they didn't change that until 06 which is what this one is and that one says 3800 series so they just basically on the last few years of the series 3 they changed that but not a big big deal it's probably a minor change in the casting. They started going, I think, either late 04, early 05. I'll look it up um, from the stamped steel oil pans to the cast aluminum ones. I was kind of hoping this had a cast aluminum one so that I could try that out for keeping the engine cool. But the 160 degree thermostat on these turbo engines still keeps it pretty cool. Uh, it's more just the underhood temperatures that go up on those. All right, the harness is off. You can see basically 
I tried laying it out the way it sits on the engine unit. A PCM connection up here. This is kind of where it runs around the back side of the engine to the alternator. This is where it runs over to the fuse box. And then down here across the bottom of the front of the engine, down to the wheel speed sensor, air conditioner, um, starter, down to the other wheel speed sensor. I left the ignition module connected for now just because that's all going to come off when I start pulling the pulley system apart and pull the coil bracket off. The idea is to get to a point where the fuel rail is out of the way, EGR is out of the way, and I can then go to taking the supercharger off and the lower intake off because I will be moving to the turbo setup, whether it goes to the Holden intake or I go back to my L26 intake manifold down there. I'll be able to put my head studs in, put some more multi-layer steel gaskets in there. Anyway, this is a very early 2004 engine from what I can tell from manufacturing dates. The harness said it was made in um, like March of 03, something like that. All right, we got a little cleaned up now. I pulled the plugs. They had some Autolite Platinum 606s in there. They all look fairly standard. They're not beautiful. Overall, we're starting to get down to the core engine. I'm going to pull the supercharger off and the lower intake manifold so that we can just see the condition of it. I gave a little wiggle. I can feel just the start of the wear into the coupler inside the supercharger here. So if this gets used, I will probably throw, you know, the 20, 30 bucks at replacing that just so that it's fresh, but I want to see what the rotors look like. All right, we got it off. It looks really good. This Teflon coating is nearly 100%, barely some wear on a couple of the edges. You can see kind of those two little shiny lines right here on the outer edges that go against the wall and then interface as they push together. But hardly any fluid, little oil fuel here in some spots, but nothing really getting out leaking past where those openings are. All right, the lower intake manifold is off and there was definitely leaking around these coolant holes. You can see the gunk coming up outside of the square that it should be contained in. And they're all pretty much compromised. That's the rear head, the front head, or the left, if it's in a rear wheel drive vehicle. This is, it's probably the original gaskets that came with this engine. Those are going right in the trash because they are never seeing an engine again. Now the valve covers are off. Nothing looks loose on the rockers. They're all just at ease except for the one or two that are down on each side. It's at rest. My guess was correct. Somebody has been at least this far into the engine. Um, they tried replacing the front, if not both. Um, they did the little trick where you try to put dabs of RTV on there, but even still, if you can see, this one was definitely not seated properly when they bolted it down. It squished a little crooked, which probably didn't help keeping the seal. And both of them had a pretty good mess around them, so... These are hard gaskets to get a good seal on on these motors. They don't really stick out that far, even one when they're new. Um, I just replaced the ones on the Turbo Regal to try and get the best seal possible there. But I think the picture's coming together on why the top of this engine was such a mess. The intake manifold gaskets were leaking and the valve cover gaskets were leaking. Those two things combined are just going to cause a slurry of coolant and oil to get around. I did not do a compression test on this because I would have to hook up a starter to it and everything like that and I didn't want to go through that headache. So what we'll do is we will just pop these heads off at some point soon to get them ready for the ARP studs and the fresh multi-layer steel gaskets and start putting the upgraded valve train in here. We'll take this off, we'll plug the one, the one uh, bolt hole on the bottom of this that goes into a coolant passage. If you ever look at a 
um, factory naturally aspirated L36, L26. You will see just a little lonely bolt down there in the side of the block, and that's what that's doing. I'm going to be doing upgraded oil pump components to make sure that when we do rev it high again and start going up towards 7,000 on purpose, that we'll have the oiling we need if we need to do anything else before we put this all back together. I have to put my oil feed for the turbo off of here, and I'm probably going to put an extra gauge um, sensor. Soon we will crack open the bottom and look at those L32 rods that are in there, clean it all up, put all the upgraded parts on it, get it ready for the turbo setup so that we can continue having fun, continue getting bad grandpa out there on the streets, on the track, and having a lot of fun. <laughs>